Hello, and welcome to part two of our tutorial on exporting Collider models. Uh, we're going to import a Collider model that we created called QB in the first part. So let's click on him. And this brings up the Collider import shape uh, converter. And as you can see here, we have one node, one material, six polygons, and one animation strip. And Torque Collider Importer automatically names the animation strip Ambient. So we're going to load this in by saying OK. And you can see our little model was flying around playing all of the animations in the file that we just imported. And to get rid of that, click the play ambient check mark off. Now, making sure that our item is selected, we're going to go up here to the shape editor. Zoom him out, zoom him way out so we can watch our animations because the little cube flies all over the place. And we're going to set up our animations. Okay. Right now, our animations consist of 101 frames. Uh, one extra frame is added by torque to the animation strip. Um, I don't know if it's a buffer or whatever, but there's always going to be one extra frame on your animations. So here we got the ambient, and if we click on ambient, you see it automatically starts playing all of our frames, or all of our animations within our animation strip. Uh, we want to pause that, rewind it, uh, so that we can work with this. So what we want to do is we want to select the ambient, which contains all of our animations. And we want to create a new sequence, a new animation sequence, by clicking the little piece of paper over here. So we click that. Now you see we've got a new animation sequence called My Sequence 1, and it contains all the frames that the ambient sequence has. The reason being is this is getting all of its animation from the source, which in this case is our ambient animation file. So let's name this left to right. And right here we want to set our end frame. This is the beginning frame that this new sequence will begin at. In this case, I want it to start at zero because this is because that's where the animation that I want begins at zero. But I want it to stop playing the animation. I want it to stop playing the animation at frame 40. So we type in 40 and hit return. And you notice on our animation timeline, it shows that we've got a beginning frame at 0 and an ending frame at 40. Now, if we was to play this, you see there's our animation. OK. Now, let's select Ambient again and click New Sequence. And we're going to name this up to down. Oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> we're going to name this Spinny. And hit OK. And this one, we want to start at frame 60 and go to frame 100. Alrighty. 
So if we play that, you'll see it's got a marker at frame 60 and a marker at frame 100. So if we play that, it plays our cube spinning around. That's nice. All right. Now remember, do not change ambient. Do not change its frames, its in and out frames, or anything because I found out that if you change any of this frame information, for some reason it messes up my animations. It it, um, it cuts out all of the animation above whatever you put on the outside. So if I change this from 0 to say 5, then there are no more animation frames after frame 5. Since these use frame frames that are set after frame 5, then they would only play frame, this one would only play from 0 to 5 and quit. This one wouldn't play at all because these frames no longer exist. So it's important, do not mess with the ambient. Now, these guys are set to loop. Uh, generally, you probably wouldn't have them looping unless it's a animation that you want to call um, when something is triggered or something, say a, uh, um, a windmill spinning say a player walks up and pushes a button and this turns on a motor that causes a fan or something to spin then you would want that to loop so that that animation keeps playing over and over until you either tell it to quit or change it to a, one of these other animations um, also now I'm not sure if this is the proper way to do it or not but uh, I've also found that by adding a new sequence in here and uh, I call ID for idle and setting it to zero zero then you've got a uh, idle animation that does nothing so that even even if it's played you can see it has a zero to one there's nothing for it to do okay so I'm, I'm sure the, the root pose since it has no animations is the proper way to do it but you know in my case and stuff just in case and stuff <laughs> okay last thing you do is save this out by hitting the floppy disk okay it goes ghosted which shows that it that this stuff has been saved now if you add more sequences you need to save them out as well so it can update that file now all this is saved out to the same folder that it was loaded from so we're gonna go look at that and you can see here there's the original Dell file the original Collider file QB and he's 39.3 uh, K big and it's created a QBCS file for us and a cached DTS file. Torque will first check this folder when this object is used and loaded into Torque during your game. It will look for a cached DTS file and it will load that in because this is a binary file and as you can see the file size is much more efficient than the original the uh, original Dell or Kalina file um, up here. It's very a lot more smaller. If this file doesn't exist, don't worry because it will automatically pick this file up and use it. Um, which is good for exporting your games because you don't want to give people your original model when you export your game uh, package to be given away or sold or however you're doing it so you can um, I'm told you can delete this Dell file as long as you don't touch the cached file and you just send your game out packaged with the, the cached DTS files that way people can't steal your characters or your models and use them in their own programs or games and stuff if you leave the Dell file um, 
or day file, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, uh, Collide, the original Collida file in your folder when you export your game and package it. Um, people have access to your original artwork and models, which you probably don't want them to do. All right, cool. So that gets us uh, done for that. Our model is imported in. It's got animations. They're all named, so whenever you go to call during your game, you go to call a animation sequence. Make sure you name these something that you know, like walk or run or strafe left, strafe right, jump, whatever your model's doing, um, spin, <laughs> like I got spin. And uh, whenever you call that within Torque during uh, your game, it will play the animation. And that's it for this uh, Torque tu uh, tutorial. And uh, I appreciate you watching. And I also appreciate comments or any updates to anything that I may have told you wrong. <laughs> have a good day.